Hello cookbook friends, this is Carrie with Cookbook Divas, and today I'm making an exception of looking through a cookbook that barely has any photos, because you know I'm all about the pictures, but I'm intrigued enough by the actual recipes in the German-Jewish cookbook by Gabrielle Rosmer Grotman and Sonia Grotman. It's Recipe and History of a Cuisine. So even though there's not going to be a lot of pictures, I really, really want to know what they are cooking and teaching us to make. So let's check it out came out in ooh bad off to a bad start black and white photo oh more <laughs> okay brandeis university press i guess they're trying to save money so they can have more pages let's check out the table of contents introduction dietary note one the history of jews in germany and their food two weekday meals lots and lots and lots and lots of them three shabbos and holiday meals Four, sausage and cold cuts, with only two recipes, <laughs> head cheese, mm -mm -mm. and lentil soup with ringwurst. The vegetable chapter has quite a few, parties, coffee, and cake, and core recipes for things such as vegetable broth, beef broth, chicken broth, white sauce, raspberry syrup, butter dough, yeast dough, duck and goose fat, and herb mayonnaise. Okay. So the dietary note at the head of each recipe lets you know if it's parve, dairy, or meat. Here's a foreword, which I'm going to read later when I'm off camera because I really want to learn. And this is a very long <laughs> foreword. Lots of information. And the history of Jews in Germany and their food, the early history, the Middle Ages, and beyond. And, whoa, really long. The Enlightenment. Munich as an example, Jewish patterns of migration. Gabby remembers living and eating in Washington Heights. Um, wow, this is really long. Okay, excuse me. And wow, okay. Let's get to weekday meals. Jewish dining patterns vary from weekday to weekend because the workday is clearly separated from the Sabbath when it is universal practice to have special meals. Well, definitions of special might vary depending on time period, location, food availability, and economic standing. The premise of eating foods that are more ordinary during the week is generally true. In this chapter, we include recipes for dishes that were or continue to be eaten during everyday meals. Okay, that said, some of these recipes are more special than others, and some might even be considered holiday or Sabbath worthy. So, white bean soup. Spring pea and asparagus soup, vegetable soup with pancake ribbons. Here's an illustration. Calf's liver soup dumplings. That would be a no for me. Soup dumplings, sour cherry soup. I would eat the heck out of that, yum. Salmon and aspic, chilled fruit soup, etc. So we're gonna skip ahead because there's not a lot of reasons to flip all the way through when there's no photos. But here's Eveline remembers her childhood sweetbreads and pastry shells, chicken fricassee. Here's another insert. This is hard to read on this green font. Emmy and the fatted goose. Nice little story that goes on for a couple pages. Here's a dish called hopple popple. It's a dish considering, uh, excuse me, consisting of leftovers. Hey, that's like my Sunday and Monday nights. It's an invitation to use up whatever's in your fridge or strikes your fancy. And that way it reminds us of landing the get out of jail free card in Monopoly. I like these these authors. Okay. Onion, raw vegetables, potatoes, leftover meat, herbs, caraway seeds, and a couple eggs. Fair enough. Here's a German pancake recipe. Spetzel. We knew Spetzel would be in here. Here's a photograph. And it's a nice one. It's apple cake with yeast dough. Thank you. Here is soups and potato salad and salmon and aspic. So there are some pictures in the middle. Here's a recipe for baked apple pudding with pears, baked rice souffle with cherries, yum, plum pudding. Now we're on the Sabbath and holiday meals chapter. The Jewish holiday with the most impact on the culinary traditions is the weekly Sabbath, which occurs 52 times a year. This day of rest is both joyful and solemn, devoted to worship, family, and fun. There are numerous rules in place, biblical in origin, to ensure that no work, including cooking, 
is conducted in the period between sundown on Friday and sundown on Saturday. This prohibition has had a strong influence on the kinds of foods that are prepared each week for Sabbath. And I grew up as a Seventh-day Adventist, and we shared the same Sabbath day as Jewish people, and Jewish kids came to our school, and we would get out of school early on Fridays to go home and supposedly help our moms cook and clean for Sabbath and get the food ready. We didn't help very much. We watched cartoons. Oh, we were bad children. Anyway, I get it. Here is a Birch's recipe, chicken soup and rice. Green kern soup with duck. Never heard of that. Matzo balls, of course. You knew there'd be a matzo ball recipe. Breaded veal cutlets, beef goulash. So I guess you can you can heat the food up without cooking on Sabbath, right? You just can't make the food. Sour broughton, matzo dumplings, matzo chalet, something, chalet, noodle shell, I don't know how to say that. Twice baked potato, coconut macaroons, almond macaroons, cinnamon stars, yum. And spiced chocolate hazelnut cookies, Heyman cookies, knee donuts. Oh, they actually have something to do with a knee. Okay. Dried fruit compote, wine cream, ooh, chestnut cream, rice pudding with cream and strawberries, emperor's cake. Now we're in the sausage and cold cuts, which is only two recipes, but lots of info. Now we're in vegetables such as beet and celery root salad with watercress, cabbage slaw, carrots with parsley, green beet salad with summer savory, pan fried potatoes with caraway seeds. I've had those before. Yum. Why don't I make those? I have caraway seeds and I have potatoes. Potato pancakes, of course. Opa's potato salad. Oh, we get more photos. We get a few photos. Yay. There's a chicken. What else can I show you? Here's a kohlrabi and white sauce recipe with the photos of something else. Savoy cabbage and white sauce, spinach and white sauce, yum. Here's a spinach, eggs, and potato description of a meal. Vegetables, vinaigrette. Chapter 6, pastries, coffee, and cake. Okay. Stuffed eggs, smoked salmon canopies, meat salad, mm -mm. Uh, wine punch with strawberries, almond biscuits, butter cookies, apple cake with yeast dough, which we saw a picture of earlier, Gugelhoff, plum cake, marble cake, hedgehog cake with a little illustration, <laughs> uh, white sauce, and here's all the basics. Okay, I am going to turn off the camera and actually go read the very long introduction and history of German Jewish cooking. I can't say, I, I mean, I wish this had photographs, better photos in it, but lots and lots of recipes are crammed in here. Love it. Want to try several of the vegetarian ones and some of the sides. And of course, who's not going to make German pancakes? Hello. So that's Recipes and History of a Cuisine by Gabrielle Rossmer Grotman and Sonia Grotman. Thanks so much for watching this cookbook look through with us. If you made it all the way through, you can follow Cookbook Divas on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, our blog, and on our podcast. Bye.